everybody and welcome to Raising Vibrations and uh, in today's video we're going to be talking about the sun sign forecasts for the month of February and um, in last month's uh, description uh, I shared a little bit about the way in which the sun sign and the ascendant work together and why these um, solar cycles are important to to watch and listen to and in today's discussion little opener I'm going to be talking about something that's really, really fascinating, to be honest. Um, it's always been a way in which we've understood astrology. And uh, today we're going to be talking about something called a neutrino. Okay, the neutrino stream, the neutrino field, the neutrino ocean, however you wish to find it. Um, it is the Aquarian age, in my opinion, um, word or terminology for the word for prana or energy or... Um, the uh, chi that we have uh, labeled as a way to understand information and the way in which we experience this universe. So what is energy? What is the way in which we are um, having consciousness and the way in which we understand the spectrum of light? So neutrino and the neutrino stream is a, or a neutrino itself is a very small particle, okay? It's actually smaller than an atom and its mass basically penetrates through atoms and basically what happens with a neutrino is that it, it contains information okay of everything that it passes through so it permeates the totality of our entire um, reality in which we experience and that is how we actually get to understand the astrology impacting us how we get the planetary archetypes and how the information passes through us Okay, it's no coincidence that um, in the uh, ancient times we would have a lot of teachings, esoteric teachings, in which the sun would be a way in which we would absorb um, photon energy and we would basically have our cellular memory activated through that experience. That's why if you notice on the internet, uh, there's a lot of things about sun gazing or, um, you know, spending a great deal of time activating itself through the sun. The same, obviously, with plants and stuff. It's not a coincidence. And so the information that moves through our, our reality is this thing called the neutrino ocean, the neutrino stream. Um, and like, like I said, it was prana, chi, energy, however you wish to describe it. And there's, the, like I said, these little small particles that um, are, are incredibly tiny. They're incredibly, incredibly tiny, okay? And then in the description below, I've got some links for everybody to go and read and check this out and to educate yourself on. Um, because it's a really, really fascinating thing to do. Science is really trying to understand this in a very deep way. Um, and so what the neutrino does is it basically moves through the sun and the sun permeates these neutrinos. And as it basically comes through earth and it moves through our body, we have all the information imprinting our consciousness, imprinting our body. And this process is the way in which these planetary energies influence us, like I said, all right? And it's uh, according to a system of knowledge, 70% uh, of the neutrino is actually coming from the sun and the rest of it comes from the universe in itself and the collapsed stars permeate information. And as it moves through us, through everybody, okay, it moves through us and it basically sticks on us for information and uh, it moves through and carries information. And that's how we basically are evolving our consciousness which is why I've come to understand that these sun sign forecasts are really, really powerful pieces of information to understand because the fact that we can um, have the sun sign, so my sun sign Scorpio, your sun sign, whatever, the sun, as it basically manifests itself and it permeates the, the, the earth and the trino information goes through the sun and through your chart, it activates your, your consciousness, it activates your template. And this template basically reflects to you the nature of how your consciousness is evolving in this lifetime. So watching your astrology has become something so fascinating to me even more because as it opens up this dimension of reality, we get to see how much the universe is consistently supporting us with what we have come here to evolve. And that's why for me, understanding these sun sign forecasts and understanding them through an evolutionary cycle has brought an immense amount of like, wow, I really actually like this. I really actually enjoy understanding how these things are influencing us in a massive way, more so than I had in the past. So neutrinos, neutrino stream, this is how this information gets imprinted through us. 
And I wanted to share a picture with everybody over here. Let me just go over to the screen and you can still hear me. And on the right hand side, you see a, a guy standing over there and the sun permeating the, the neutrinos, the information being reflected from the sun. The sun contains light. The light is obviously what we are in consciousness and that moves through us. And there are approximately 65 billion neutrinos moving through your body every minute. So the capacity for us to actually experience these neutrinos moving through us is so incredibly large. And you can see on the left hand side over here, the sun, neutrinos from the sun, right? It basically comes from the center of the sun and it moves through all the planetary systems and permeates through earth. And that's how we obviously are impacted by this. And it's really, really fascinating. And like I said in the description below, there's a couple of links that you can click on to go and read more about this and see some of the experiments that uh, science is doing at the moment to capture this. And you know, according to, to the way in which they've been able to capture this, only 6% six, 6 of the 65 million neutrinos have science, has science been able to actually like uh, put it down and say, hey, we can spot these things called the ghost particle. So this, this is a really, really fascinating thing for us to be able to actually track the way in which our consciousness is being imprinted from um, the neutrino stream. And we're having this happen to us all the time. That's how the nature of the universe moves through us. And we're constantly watching this process just unfold in our way. So really fascinating stuff. All right, guys, um, I hope that you enjoyed uh, this little introduction. And um, right coming up right now is your sun sign forecasts. And my Libra friends, and welcome to your sun sign forecast for 2017, the month of February. Hope you're well, and um, I hope that you enjoyed the little introduction on how the astrology actually um, impacts us and how the sun is influencing the way in which we experience our transits and the way in which our life is actually evolving through us. And we're really here to be able to um, really absorb that experience and for us to develop that deep insight and awareness that comes as part of the journey. So a little bit of inspiration there to really um, share with anybody that's uh, wanting to know astrology and yet at the same time still feeling confused about how all these things work. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and look at your actual chart itself and um, get some deep insight into what February is bringing to you. And again for you, Libra, We've got to start with Pluto, of course. This is the bottom line of the chart, okay? Whenever you're looking at your solar um, stuff, Pluto will always be in your natal chart and in this chart as well. it will be bringing to you the deepest uh, unconscious evolutionary dynamics, okay? This is where you'll be watching a lot of um, things end in your life and you'll be watching a lot of uh, things being reborn in your life as Pluto moves through the solar fourth house for you. So this is very much about your learning about uh, emotions, you're learning about the emotional reality of life, you're understanding how your own sense of um, self-identity has been conditioned and um, influenced through your childhood, you're looking at the, the way in which you connected to your community, you're looking at the way in which your life has evolved through um, how you've valued yourself in the home, how those ideals have been passed down from your parents, and their grandparents. So it's a very, 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 very intense ride for any person or any constellation to really have their sort of fourth house activated by Pluto because it's always a consistent kind of pushing back onto the emotional reality in order for you to say, ah, you know, is this where I'm connected? This is where I'm not connected. How do we bond um, in that sense? And of course, it's breaking down the whole entire uh, fabric of how you understand the, the archetype of family as well. So um, some really, really intense experiences for you there. But at the same time, you're also learning how to become incredibly self-reliant and self and to, to grow in this lifetime as well. Okay. And this is a great opportunity for you to watch yourself become your own parent and a way to nurture those emotions and um, like really, really open up and allow yourself to feel in profound ways. Now you've got Saturn transiting your um, solar third house of your astrological chart. And of course, Saturn is really bringing a lot of uh, things to you around your ability to communicate. You've probably found yourself um, needing to really uh, see where people have authority and communication, 
where you've had to learn how to communicate where your sense of authority is also very strong and a part of the process and how you've been connecting with your immediate environment, okay? And so Saturn is really, really bringing you a lot of information around this um, sense of uh, defining yourself and how you connect with um, your language. What type of language do you use? How are you connecting? So a lot of things around you will be showing you the, the way in which you can effectively communicate with a sense of authority. Now, the sun is transiting through your solar fifth house, and it's been there since, of course, um, the 21st of, of um, January. And as we know, the solar fifth house for you is all about creative self um, actualization. It's, it's how you bring your sense of personality to the world. It's how you bring your sense of um, uh, joy and um, color to everything that you do. And you've probably been, been finding yourself really in a space of wow, I really love this experience and I'm having my heart light up and this is a great opportunity for you to really get in touch with what is enjoyable for you, okay? Now, if we have a look over here on your on the, the charts, you've got the 3rd of February and um, if we look over there, Venus moves into your solar 7th house where it joins Mars. And the solar 7th house is all about relationship dynamics, which of course, this is natural to you. You're learning in this lifetime how to um, connect with others. You're learning how to listen to how other people operate and you how to validate your own inner relationship. You're learning how balance works. Remember, our sun sign is where we've come to grow in this lifetime and the sun sign will evolve itself through the cycles that you're watching every single month. So. Whatever the theme is for this month, that's what you're learning for this month as a Libra soul. Do you see it? And it's a really profound thing to actually understand when it comes to this, because it gives you an incredible amount of consistent growth and insight in how you're expanding your awareness. So for you, this month will be about um, what's fair for you, what's not fair, connecting with the right way, um, learning to develop your ability to, to be heard and also how you are also listening to others as it is for themselves. So equality and balance and fairness is something that you're going to be focusing on quite a lot here, okay? A big deal for you. Now, um, if we go over to the 6th of uh, February, we can actually see that uh, Jupiter begins its retrograde motion. Can you see there? And for you, Jupiter transiting your first house, your first solar house is about a new self identity. Okay. It's about you here to begin to find a new way in which you can relate to the world. And, and this is a new sense of direction for you and you being reborn in this area. Now, of course, this whole entire chart is holistic. There is no separation. So when you're looking at trans Jupiter transiting your, your first house, you're looking at how is your overall emotional sense of identity changing? How are you learning how to communicate with a sense of authority? How are you adding a f the flavor of your personal joy to the process? Yeah. How is your relationship dynamics healing themselves? Okay. And how are you deconditioning yourself from the old ways? So Jupiter retrograde is saying, okay, we've been doing this for quite some time. You've been expanding your sense of direction. And now we're going to kind of go back a little bit and review the way in which we've you know, presented ourselves in the world and the direction and is this the right path? And you're getting an opportunity to just say, well, I want to readjust this. I want to readjust that. I don't want to go down this road anymore. So to me, whenever I see retrogrades, I feel it's a great opportunity for us to just say, ah, oh, yes, I get that second opportunity to not um, need to do that or not to do this or yes, I want to go down this route now. So a really great opportunity to begin to explore different avenues and be experimental during this um, Mercury, this part of me, this Jupiter retrograde period. Okay. So if we go over to the 10th of February for you, okay, we've got a solar, um, we've got a lunar eclipse happening in Leo, which is at the top of the chart over there, 22 degrees, even though that says 28. Um, and for all of us on the planet, this is going to deal a lot with where we feel accepted, where we feel integrated, where we feel like we can bond, where we can be a part of something. And we're going to feel that emptiness. And this is going to promote the deep theme for 2017, which is we need to find our way back to humanity. We need to find our way back to where we belong as individuals and what does individuality represent to us. Um, I actually did a presentation on, on the year of 2017 forecast 
where I go deeply into this process. So if that is something that you do actually want to uh, uh, listen to, I actually got that recording and you can uh, just email me and just say, hey, I want to get this uh, forecast for 2017. Um, it's like 10 bucks or something. And it gives a very, very strong perspective of what 2017 is going to bring as the solar and lunar eclipses happen in February, because they are going to set the tone for us in a really uh, profound way. So as we experience that uh, full moon solar eclipse, uh, lunar eclipse in Leo, we're going to then go on to the moon making a conjunction to uh, Jupiter, and that's going to set the tone for the retrograde. Okay, so on the 14th of February, which is, of course, uh, Valentine's Day in terms of the, the world that we live in, um, we're going to find ourselves having a very interesting Valentine's Day. I think there's going to be a lot of um, broken hearts, <laughs> in my opinion, at least. And, you know, that's just my own personal perspective. Because, of course, that Jupiter is making a connection to Chiron, and it's also opposing Uranus. So instead of feeling like we're all about acceptance and love, it's going to be like, hey, these demands on me are not fair, and I don't want to live in a, in, a, in a place in which I don't feel like I can breathe, and I want my space, and... I want to be able to love myself just as equally as I can love something existentially. So that's fun. And then on the 18th of uh, February, we've got the sun entering Pisces, which is now moving into your solar um, sixth house. And of course, there's been a huge party for you uh, since December. So December and January, there's been a huge party in the solar uh, sixth house. And this is all about competence. This is all about wanting to heal yourself, Libra. So a lot of the story here for you has been about influencing the way in which you are growing up in this lifetime. And again, that's got to do with the Pluto in the fourth house. How are you effectively running your day? What is the most um, effective way in which your health is operating? So this is a month when the moon moves in, where the sun moves into Pisces in which your health will come into play. And it's not necessarily negative. It's just a case of this is a great opportunity to really begin to flush out and purify. It's a great opportunity to fast if you are somebody that does that. It's a great opportunity to really clear out your, your system of all of the, the stuff that doesn't support you and begin to freshen up, basically. This is the great opportunity when you go to the bathroom and you splash yourself with some water and you get perspective. And you're like, ah, fresh, I'm ready to take on life again. And so when that sun moves into that solar sixth house for you, you get this, you begin to get into this routine. And then of course we have the moon make a new moon experience formation. And that's on the 26th of February. And that will be a solar eclipse in Pisces. Now this solar eclipse in Pisces is going to really, really amplify your relationship to life as what are you here to do that brings you success what are you here to do that brings you a feeling of completion a feeling of ah i can wake up in my day and this is my routines this is what i would like to do with my time this is not what i'd like to do with my time how can i become more effective and efficient and so the solar eclipse will bring an incredible amount of illumination in this in this road for you okay so the way that you would process this is just to observe just to watch just to allow yourself to to let these energies move through you watch what's happening in your environment watch what people come to you Watch what happens to you during this period of month. And just at the end of the month, collect all the insight that's manifested through you. And then you basically just allow yourself to move through with acting on the impulses of these new insights. And that's how this mutation works. Okay. All right, guys. Thanks very much for listening to me babble to you. Um, don't forget to check out any services that I've got that you may need. For instance, readings. If you're interested in learning your actual astrology chart, I've got that program as well, which is amazing. Um... And yeah, again, thanks very much for all of your support. I greatly appreciate it and have a fantastic February. Take care. Bye-bye.